two top officials of this administration under fire for what many consider as tasteless and totally inappropriate remarks. Communication Secretary Martin and Danar saying European Union officials critical of President Duterte are just loud because they want, quote, more sex. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo also criticized for joking that he still does it like, quote, an 18-year-old. Is this a case of the president's uh, way of talking, the so-called Duterte speak, rubbing off on his underlings? Is it getting out of control? We'll talk about this and more with uh, former Solicitor General Florine Hilbay, who joins us live here in our Rappel studio. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Nice to have you here in the show, sir. First, let's talk about this, uh, this gutter language. language that seems to be rubbing off on the president's men. Uh, basically, let's talk about the quality of discourse. What will be the long-term impact of this? Or do you sense any uh, uh, authenticity in the actuations of the president's men? Because we know that the president really talks this way. Mm -hmm. But how about his men? Well, I, I don't know them personally, so I can't talk about whether that's who they are you know, uh, at a private level. But the impact on our conversations in public uh, will be very clear. Like, uh, it will downgrade you know, the level of conversation. Uh, we want to talk about politics that uplift. We want to talk about policies. We don't want to talk about you know, uh, the affairs of uh, uh, the Chief Presidential Legal Counsel, the private opinion of the uh, Secretary of the PCOO. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you want to filter out well every time you go out in public and talk to the the press or someone else well basically uh, how does it affect the institution for example or the offices you have two important positions here okay. let's not even talk about the president now just uh, the chief presidential legal counsel and the office of the communications right it degrades those types of uh, institutions uh, the chief presidential legal counsel is very important because it's the private Council of the the president, uh, you don't want to hear that kind of language from uh, him. The communications head, in particular of the the president, uh, should be especially sensitive about the kind of language that he he uses because he talks for the the president. And uh, given the style of the president, you would think that you know the the people around him would impose a certain type of restraint mm -hmm. on. Uh, their part, you know, to help assist, you know, uh, the president in uplifting the, the level of conversation. But basically, do you think it's just a case of uh, taking a cue from the president? Because this is how the president uh, talks. And basically, when people call their attention, wait, the president talks this way, so what's wrong? And there seems to be acceptability. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, they are alter egos of the president, but they are alter egos in the sense that uh, what they do, uh, becomes policy unless uh, changed by the president. It doesn't translate into a requirement that they follow uh, the kind of language of the president. Mm. You also have this sense that uh, some of the other officials in this administration are not just trying to copy the president's way of talking, but also somehow overdoing it. Mas That's Duterte right. or mas macho pa kay Duterte. Right, like right. in the case of uh, Speaker Alvarez and before uh, PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa. Right. Uh, that's right. There's a sense that they're trying to compensate and they're trying to follow the the leader, uh, but you you really don't want to to do that because uh, again uh, they must be able to recognize that they are holding important positions in government and people are looking up to them. They don't want to go down to uh, to the level of you know uh, gutter language, uh, even if that might appear you know. Uh, what, uh, delectable for the, the public. But uh, what do you tell, for example, people who have this impression that, uh, wait, they, they speak that way and somehow it's acceptable to us, but what's important to us is whether they deliver certain services, de deliver certain promises. Basically, there's a dichotomy as far as certain people are concerned. Uh, well, I'm not sure about that uh, the dichotomy, uh, whether there's a need or whether it's even possible to dichotomize uh, because the, the kind of language that you employ also affects the kind of work that you do. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I use, I use this discussion as a segue to this other uh, important uh, issue now confronting uh, this country. The, for example, the, the level of public discourse, especially right. if you just log on your Twitter account, Facebook, you right. see very vicious exchanges. Now, you are the uh, lawyer pro bono of uh, right. uh, uh, Joe Bernauri, who was right. outed. So basically, you're set to file libel cases, right? Uh, we're are, looking. Are they ready? Uh, we're looking at a set of cases. I can tell you right now what those cases uh, will be. But for the most part, uh, it will have to be. Well, definitely, it will include uh, a particular component, which is uh, a damage suit for uh, outing Jover Laurio and the kind of language that they used against her. So outing, what exactly is the violation if you out someone who was well, anonymous? A person has a constitutional right to privacy right? uh, and therefore everything that she, she does right, uh, should be protected. Uh, given in particular the, the attacks that have been leveled against the opponents of, a, of the, the president, uh, here you have an, an ordinary citizen uh, complaining or talking in a... Um, in a sarcastic tone, in a funny tone about government incompetence, uh, dishonesty, and even corruption. Uh, that is a protected uh, form of expression. And people have used uh, the wall of anonymity as a form of protection. Uh, if they can send, the government can send on bogus charges a senator of the republic uh, for calling out the, the president for uh, human rights abuses. Like, uh, what protection do you have if you're an ordinary uh, citizen? Anonymity is your strongest form of protection. But is anonymity also an excuse for, for people, for example, like Joe Verlaurio, to, to go on what others consider as vicious attacks as well, basically using that as cover? Uh, well, that's freedom of uh, expression, uh, and that is protected by, by the marketplace of ideas. A private person has the right to speak the way she wants to speak. And if you read the, the posts of uh, Joe Berlario, uh, that's not the other language. Uh, that's, in fact, funny and laughable language. Uh, that's a but the others are not laughing. <laughs> Well, because they're the ones who are subject of the criticism. Yeah, precisely. Right. Uh, but, you know, you can compare the, the level of the, 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 la the, the quality of the language used by Ms. Jover Laurio. Uh, uh, she doesn't talk the way the president talks. That's the, the clearest contrast that you can provide. In terms of the damaged suit, which will accompany the, the other charges that you're preparing, how much are we talking about here? Uh, you have to wait for that. You'll have to wait for that. Because it's a gracious thing, right? That's right. Mm, That's right. You need to pay a certain percentage of the right. Damage. The filing fees. Uh, we're looking at uh, potentially crowdsourcing the the filing fees for that because she she doesn't have the the funds for it. Uh, we we don't have the funds for it, and we cannot do that. So basically, you mentioned the person who outed uh, Joe Verlario, so that's uh, RJ Nieto, Thinking Pinoy. Uh, we're looking at a group of people uh, who are responsible for uh, outing her. Now, others are saying, uh, why would you use this, uh, this avenue, filing libel cases, criminal charges against those who outed you and who have been criticizing you since then, when in fact, uh, that can also be said of you when you were still anonymous? Uh, the, the fact that you were also engaging in that particular practice. Who, me? Ne, yung, ne. Jover, oh. Jover, not you, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, you were surprised by right, not right, you, not right. you. Uh, well, because she has a right to privacy as a person to talk the way she wanted to talk. Right? Uh, and like I said, you know, uh, uh, in the history of freedom of expression, right, uh, anonymity has always been a powerful uh, shield against a, a government that has shown no mercy against dissidents. Yeah, especially during the Marcos era, for example. Right. But again, uh, in this case, uh, they, they often they often cite, cite this difference. The the pro detective bloggers, many of them are not anonymous, right? Mm -hmm. So they own up to or certain. no longer. No anonymous. longer, yeah. Right. But so that that's the issue that they're that they're using against Joe Bernardo before. Well, there's no parity there because uh, if they are with the administration, then there's no need to protect them. Okay. Uh, they have, in fact, the protection of the government. But if you are an anti-administration uh, speaker, then you need all the kinds of protections that you, you need. And 
the legal cover that you have is of course uh, one of the legal covers that you have is anonymity so when are you expected to file this case? Uh, soon so within the year probably? probably and how many cases are we looking at? Yeah. Uh, well we start with one of course uh, one. we can begin with one case and then we can we're, we're looking at a, a spectrum of causes of actions here so it's a violation of the Data Privacy Act? That's right. What else? Uh, well, the Civil Code uh, provides for uh, remedies and relief for violation of your constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. How about the violations on the uh, anti-cyber crime law? We're also looking at that. So it's a whole gamut of choices that you of have? Of course, because we, we need to protect everyone uh, and Jover Laurio is your footnote number one for the type of person that you need to protect especially given the the distinctive feature of what she does which is to promote what I call a recibo culture right? uh, this is a, a person right, uh, who has a very high standard precisely because for everything that she says she provides evidence, evidence which she calls uh, recibo and so it's very difficult to, there's a very high level of constraint in what she does, right? uh, as opposed to the government pro Duterte pro bloggers uh, who seem to enjoy right, uh, using their imagination and creativity to, to re-angle certain types of information or even invent information in certain instances. But would she have uh, identified herself had she not been outed? Probably not. Precisely because if you were in her place, right, uh, someone who is frustrated, disappointed, maybe even sometimes angry about what the government has been doing, right, uh, uh, you probably wouldn't have any incentive to come out. Uh, your incentive is to provide the kind of information that uh, the marketplace of ideas would like to uh, receive. And that is why I think she has become rather popular, mm -hmm. right? notwithstanding the anonymity, because people appreciate this recibo culture. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that in an era of you know, fake information, dishonesty, malicious use of information, there is this anonymous person who is trying her best to provide us with uh, evidence of what she does as a platform for uh, criticizing mm -hmm. the government. Now, of course, that's how a lot of people on social media see her. But that's the right. other side see her as someone who was also as vicious and is now playing the victim card. How do you respond? Well, to she's a victim because precisely because her constitutional rights were, were violated. And like I said, again, there's really no parity between what she does and uh, what the pro Duterte government uh, bloggers do, or even the public officials in the uh, in the gov uh, Duterte government. Uh, many of those guys have been called out by these bloggers and by the press right, uh, for dishonesty, mm -hmm. and yet they have not been held accountable by by the heads of their agencies or by the president uh, himself. And so you have a culture where they have gotten away with a lot of dishonesty. Right? Uh, and because they are in government or supported by government, that has uh, impacted on the kind of conversations that we, we have. The quality of discourse. Right. I, uh, I think at the very least, uh, because some people might be offended by the use of the word dishonest, dishonesty or certain motivations for, for propagating this fake news. But I think at the very least, it's sloppy work. Dishonesty is dishonesty, <laughs> right? Uh, if, you know, they have been called out for providing false information, the first thing that they should do is to own up to it, apologize. If they don't do that, uh, their bosses should do something about it because in the end, they are responsible for the kind of impact that they have on the marketplace of ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I always say, you, you know, the the marketplace requires a platform and that platform is bricks upon bricks of information that's credible. If they destroy that kind of an environment, the platform becomes very unstable. Nobody knows what's true anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is the responsibility of the government. Mm -hmm. How's the security of uh, Jover now? Well, I think she's okay. 
Is she getting uh, fewer death threats or more lately? I don't talk <laughs> to her about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, is she? Uh, is she having a? Does she? Ha does she have secu security? I'm not even sure. Okay. Not even sure. Now, uh, when I interviewed her, I think uh, last last week or two weeks ago, um, I noticed a certain disconnect between the the person who was in front of me mm -hmm. and the persona in the blog. That's so right. when I checked the social media feed, there was this these comments saying that uh, perhaps was she really the one writing that blog? Parang major out of character. Well, I've had. Uh, well, I disagree. I've had several conversations with her. Uh, she really is the person who writes that blog because she is as spontaneous in, you know, creating those uh, those funny angles about uh, and takes about situations. Uh, she can talk about uh, those well news, for example, uh, in precisely the way that she she blogs. But is uh, is this or is she part of a bigger propaganda machine by the so-called yellows? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so far as I know, uh, she she does her own blogs. Uh, she she talks the way she blogs because I think uh, she was a volunteer during the campaign of uh, Marwas in 2016, mm -hmm. and of course the other side also outed certain information about her pictures with certain uh, right, right. leaders identified right. with the yellow. Well, I think she's complained about not uh, about the other side not providing photos of her with GMA, for example. <laughs> right. Uh, and so they've been rather selective in doing that. And there's nothing wrong with uh, being a volunteer for Mar Rojas, I think. Uh, I think pe people listen and and read her, or people read her, precisely because of the credibility of what she, she does. Mm -hmm. uh, she provides them with verifiable information about the things that she says. And mm -hmm. that is very, very special, uh, especially in an era where people have gotten away with a lot of dishonesty. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to ask you this question, because you worked under the pre previous administration. Right. Why, why do you think, uh, or do you think this is really the case? How come the previous administration, the so-called yellows, um, seem to have very low credibility at this point? Well, I'm not sure about low credibility, uh, and I'm not sure whether we can categorize the entire administration as uh, yellow. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think that itself is uh, the problem. Uh, the but that's how the they're framing the narrative, right? That's how they're doing it, mm. uh, and I would deny that. Uh, I've never been involved in politics. I'm yeah. not a political person. I, I was a, I'm a career professor in the uh, University of the Philippines, so I doubt whether I would qualify as a yellow. I ended up actually def defending Grace Poe during the oral arguments in the Supreme Court. So uh, that's one fact that would destroy my credibility as a yellow okay. and but, so but not you the, the others the the impression the right. the, the so-called yellow cap the yellow group do, do you believe that they have really very low credibility at this point well in so far as most of the members of the liberal party have gone to pdp laban i think they would suffer a lot of damage like that and so what i'm just saying is that who are these yellows now? Uh, they're actually with the government, uh, with the Duterte administration. Mm -hmm. because, because this question is uh, uh, stands in the context of the people identified with the present administration, mm -hmm. seemingly targeting specific opi officials identified with the previous administration, either to get them out or get them to jail, like mm -hmm. your client, uh, f uh, former uh, Justice Secretary, now Senator right. Lila De Lima. And there's a reason for that uh, in the case of Lila De Lima, because she went after the president and called him out, called him out for uh, the violations of human rights. Uh, you have one, this singular you know, uh, uh, member of the Senate who went on a pro-human rights crusade, and now she's in jail. Now, what's your option? Because I think uh, the prosecutors are planning to amend. The they have already amended. They have already amended. Right. So, so wh what are the implications? Or are they even allowed to do that at this stage? They are uh, under the rules of court. But the, the implications are quite massive. Uh, number one, uh, that tells you about the level of confidence that they have on the charges that they have 
filed against Laila de Lima. So did they commit a mistake in the first place, the fact that they filed this particular violation when in fact they're now using a different section under the law? Well, euphemism, uh, mistake would be a euphemism here, right? Uh, the, just the fact that they filed charges without any evidence at <laughs> all. Of course, right? of um, course. I mean, these are drugs charges, and the first thing you need to have is the evidence of drugs yeah. uh, or any transaction involving drugs. That's why they have been already angling the charges uh, towards conspiracy because according to the theory of the government now, the new theory of the government now, uh, they can file non-bailable charges against any citizen simply because they have an affidavit uh, showing that, or apparently showing that that person, uh, like Senator Laila de Lima, talk about trading in drugs. Do you think this is also uh, what they are planning to do when it comes to, for example, former mm -hmm. Senator Marojas, former presidential candidate, and of course, Senate uh -huh. minor Minority Leader Drilon? Kasi lumabas yung pangalan nila, That's there right. was this drug suspect who allegedly linked these two officials with a drug syndicate in Negros. I don't know about the particular motive, but the template fits, you know, uh, what they have done to Senator Laila de Lima. Uh, just the use of an affidavit will be sufficient enough to, to send these guys to jail, given the, the level of leeway that the Supreme Court has allowed the prosecutors to do in the de Lima case. Finally, before I let you go, uh, Attorney Hilbay, again, you worked under the previous administration. <coughs> So far, I'm not sure whether the, the narrative is working. Mm -hmm. It's between the yellows trying to destabilize this administration and this administration suppo supporters going after them. I'm not sure whether you agree with the idea that we don't seem to have a very strong opposition, fortunately or unfortunately at this stage. And uh, do, do you think uh, the former president should uh, speak out more, make his positions uh, known on certain <laughs> issues? As a, it's been very, very, very quiet, eerily, eerily quiet, as right. far as many people right. are concerned. Well, there, there's not a lot of opposition right now, precisely because those who are supposed to be in the opposition have transferred to PDP Lawan. So they're not part of the ruling coalition. Uh, I can't talk for the, the president, uh, what, but what I see as the growing opposition would be ordinary citizens like Joe Verlaudio uh, speaking out and talking about you know, the excesses of this government. And so uh, our final hope might be in our citizens you know, uh, using a cell phone, using their uh, devices to tell the, the president in his administration that you know, uh, we're done with the fake news, the dishonesty, we're done with the gutter language, we're looking for real results. Uh, we're looking at policies that go down to the level of the ordinary citizen. That's a very good point, but as far as the political figures are concerned, do you think uh, it's because they're, they're worried? They're also living uh, inside glass houses. Now, may iba to sa kanila eh. In a way, many of the things that are happening now are also the result of certain things that they failed to do during their term as uh, uh, in the previous administration. I think every administration has failed to do something. It's what the current administration has done to prevent the opposition from leveling, uh, competing against the current administration. I think footnote number one really is Senator Laila de Lima. Uh, many of those who might have wanted to speak or might want to speak uh, are always thinking of the possibility of becoming another Laila de Lima, given what the administration has done. Uh, you know, uh, invent charges right, uh, that they are still trying to reinvent as of the moment right, uh, to file non available charges against a, a shipping senator of the Republic. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Attorney Florin Hilbay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.